I have already spoke a little bit about um, lunar exploration in a previous talk with, uh, with Zeta Gravit. That was a little bit of, um, let's say, pure audio and there wasn't much of a presentation there. So it was difficult to, to follow along. So I thought maybe I, I start a new series with, uh, with the lunar exploration that I did. Um, before I start, I wanted to introduce myself. So who am I and, and, and why do I do what I do? Uh, so I'm, I call myself as an independent researcher, but, um, so, but I'm not affiliated to any, any university yet. Um, I'm doing everything uh, on my own um, as a, um, let's say, at a hobbyist capacity in a way. Um, that would mean that I, I do everything, all my research and all my exploration I do on the side of my full-time job. So, and I work as a, as a technical architect uh, as by profession in a, in a German consultancy firm. And I'm, 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 I'm based out of Germany, but I'm back and forth between India and Germany. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that's who I'm at, who I am, and um, I'm mostly available on X at that um, user ID. And I started uh, recently a blog where I started um, talking more, discussing more about the analysis that I do on X. Uh, it was it was a recommendation by someone who followed my analysis, and then he said it's probably a good idea to start another blog because my analysis are getting pretty big, and X is getting really um, X isn't sufficient to. Um, to detail my analysis. Uh, so this is why um, I've started a new blog. I, uh, that is my recommendation also. Um, I would reduce my analysis in, in, on X in the, in the next days and I would start of focusing on the blog more and more. So I would recommend the blog first and then I would I'm more reachable uh, directly on X. That's uh, where you can reach me after the session uh, if you have any more questions. And I wanted to uh, I wanted to also give a perspective of uh, why do I do what do I do? Um, if uh, folks have already uh, seen my um, let's say analysis uh, in the past month on, on X, uh, do uh, know that I, I work mostly on lunar exploration um, as well, which includes um, um, anal uh, analyzing uh, the current missions, uh, previous missions, um, which is focusing on, on lunar exploration, which is the hot topic, because we're trying to set up a base there in the next years, uh, decades, if you will. And, and so that would be a topic of my focus uh, at the moment, but that's not necessarily the only one. I try to um, focus mostly on GIS as well, uh, which could be more, more or less on the Earth observation, uh, satellite data analysis. Um, so mostly around this uh, this topic, which is in, uh, under the remote sensing topic. Um, but why do I do what do I do? So that would be a lot of folks have asked me uh, why do I do it. Um, I, I try to focus mostly on, on on ISRO's data at the beginning because it's very underrated data. There are a lot of uh, uh, data that's available to public, not necessarily for researchers or, or scientists. So this is my main focus. Uh, oh, I started with that focus, um, and I found out that there is a, a lot more data which isn't visible to public. Uh, like Am Janta, I, I talked in my previous session. Um, so that would be my main focus. At least that's the goal of the series. So I wanted to to give this introductory talk talks as a part of the series, so that everyone else who's not necessarily a scientist who's not necessarily working in this domain can go through it, understand it, and then uh, go through it. So you don't need to, if you look into X, um, not all of them are, are scientists, quote unquote. So um, you can go through it, learn it, understand it, perhaps explore it on your own and discover something that people haven't discovered before. And, and that's the topic about uh, why it's interesting for you. This is also a topic where you might pursue your career in. A lot of young folks are also on X. So that is also my focus. Uh, so I thought maybe I could help you to to introduce this topic. So all of my sessions in the series, at least in the first part of the series, are all introductory sessions, beginners. Um, you can follow up later on, on if you want to know more on the advanced side of the of the topics. But that's the uh, idea about about me, and then what do I do? Um, <coughs> quick note on the session itself. So. Um, um, Folks who can scan the QR code can, can scan it. Uh, this is a part of the series that I've started in my blog. Uh, of course, I've discussed uh, at length in, the, in my blog. 
I wanted to, uh, to start this series to help everyone to understand what kind of uh, exploration is possible and what's there and what kind of data is available publicly, where to get it, how to download it and how to process it at least at the surface level so you don't have to wait for uh, any space agency to give out your details. Like if ISRO has, has published the data on, on Vikram Lander, you don't need to wait for it to, to find it. You can do it on your own or you don't need to um, ask for someone else uh, and uh, that was my initial idea and it wasn't available when I started so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to give this topic, open it up for everyone, for public. Uh, so that they can um, also experience it, research it on their own. So a uh, one place where they can find every information that they need to get get off. Um, so that's the second part of the session. This is the beginner session. So there's not going to be any detailed discussion, more technical analysis. I'll just gonna, I'm just going to show you how to find your data, where is it, what does every data mean. Uh, without getting into much of the details to it. All my sessions are going to be more or less beginner sessions and then in the next phase maybe I can go into advanced. So that is the idea and, and if you have any questions but feel free to ask. I will try to explain it uh, um, as much as I can in this session if, it's, um, if the session allows me. Um, so what's in it for you? I've discussed before. Um, um, so this is also useful for you to to get start in a career or explore in your uh, in your interest. I hope folks who have joined in uh, do have some kind of interest in this topic. Otherwise, why would you join? So that was my idea. So if you if you join in this session, then I assume that you are interested in this topic. So this is probably why um, that's in it for you. Um, introductory session, beginners, no prior knowledge is necessary, but it helps. Um, that's the idea. So I have a very quick agenda. I've also discussed this before. Um, so I'm going to talk about the, the, the why, what and where at the beginning and then I'm going to show you <coughs> this is going to be an interactive session. So I have my links shared in the, in the chat, in the pinned chat. Uh, please click on it and go through it yourself also along with me. Ask me questions. I encourage it. Ask me if you don't have any questions and I have also folks who have um, came from my blog. I have also asked them to, to register in the, in the Pradhan portal. If you have done, great. If you have not done, then we can do it together if you have enough time. Um, that's the idea. So we're going to go through the whole uh, data dissemination portals of ISRO, where ISRO stores the data, or where you, should we, where you should go to download the data, explore the data, and so on and so forth. That part, and then I'm going to explain about the structure of the data. So, what kind of structure it is? What kind, what is PDF of uh, PDF four? What does it mean? Uh, how what is the file structure of it? What is the uh, if you've already seen the, the files of ISRO? So, um, the structure of the data, and then I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the calibration um, data that is available, and I'll explore the the, the Moon Explorer from ISRO, which is a CH2 browse. And I'm going to also talk about the, the quick map portal from NASA, if you will. And I'm also going to introduce or show you a little bit about the SOMA portal that I've built, that I've used for my analysis. And if time permits, we will download the Vikram data. And I'll also construct some kind of crater, show you around the QGIS. QGIS. Um, yeah, that's the quick agenda of the, of the session. Okay, so uh, what, why, and, and where? So this session itself is mostly uh, focused only on the visible spectrum. Um, but if you, if you look into Chandrayaan 2, uh, there's a lot of instruments there and a lot of instruments focus on different part of the human spectrum. to to make it a little bit more let's say digestible it's easy to understand for beginners i think this would be much more sufficient let's go to the isro's data dissemination portal okay 
is um, can everyone look into their chat and then can go to the ISSDC portal? There you go. So, ISRA has this uh, um, ISDC um, um, portal. Wait a second, let me click. Right. So, ISRA uh, maintains all this, all the data that they collect and um, from different missions in a data center, and this this is the um, ISRO Space Science Data Center. And this is located in um, Bailalu campus in East Iraq. And this is where they actually store all the data. They get all the data from different kinds of mission. They process it, they archive it, and then they distribute the data from this uh, data center. Um, for us, this isn't much to do. This is just to understand where ISRO stores the data. So all the data that you access come directly from, the, from this data center. So here is the part. Um, this is the, in, the, in the same um, URL, and here is where um, ISRO currently maintains all the data. You have data from AstroSat, Chandrayaan One, MOM, Chandrayaan Two, and then this part is not so important. So these are the current missions that you can access the data currently. Uh, MOM, uh, Chandrayaan One, and these two are in the long-term archival. So if you click on it, then you would know. For example, click on the data. And you go to the long-term archival, uh, another system. Uh, they have their own credentials. They have their own way to authorize it. So authorization. Um, so you go to new user and then get yourself registered and then go through the go through the data, download it. So this is part of the long-term archival, and they are not current because they have um, it's only finished. Right. And here is Chandrayaan 2. Uh, Chandrayaan 2 uh, data, and you click on the data download, there is another portal called as Pradhan portal, which is the primary portal where you can download all your data, browse through it, and also switch to map browser also here, and you can download it here uh, by registering yourself first. So here is the registration link. Um, I think I've shared it in my, um, in my, slides or in, in the chat window. But let me explain what it means um, at the beginning. So Pradhan is a website. Um, uh, it's a web application designed by SAC, uh, no, the ISSDC. Um, this is where they store the data. And this is mostly for, um, for downloading the data and accessing the data, browsing the data. And this is based on, uh, uh, this is policy based. Uh, what does it mean is even the folks who work in ISRO also use the same portal, but they have different kinds of accesses and privileges. And then uh, as a public user, we have different accesses and privileges. So <coughs> from what I know um, is that uh, when, when um, every data that needs to go to public, they needs to be explicitly approved by someone in ISRO or SAC or somewhere who can access it and have um, a way to uh, allow it. That's what I know. Um, so this is what this is all based on policy. So they have folks who work in ISRO have different or complete access to the data. They use the same portal and also us as a public user. So every time you want to download, go to Pradhan, not ISSDC. It's just a way to look at the data. But to download data, go to Pradhan portal. OK. So um, who has registered? That would be for the audience. Did OK, Sai has registered. Um, OK, so folks who have joined in and who want to access the data of, um, of ISRO, this is how you do it. You go to this portal. The link is also in the, in the chat. <coughs> Click on register, username, whatever username, password, your email address. Um, of course, all these details that you know already, select some category. And if you're a student, select student, obviously. And then uh, fill, it up, fill up the details. Uh, they all need this. this is only for their own purposes. I'm not sure what they use it for, but that's what they have. And once you register it, if you want me to wait, I can wait. But please tell me. <coughs> so once you download, 
once you once you register once you log on this is where you would land in and this is the portal where you can download the actual d data from Chandrayaan 2 or, or AstroSat. I'm not sure about AstroSat, but Chandrayaan 2, this is where you have to go. Chandrayaan 1 is a different portal. It's on the long-term archival. And, and these are all the instruments that I've um, told you a while ago. This is uh, OHRC data, and this is the TMC2 data, and this is the map ROS. I'll talk about it later. And this is the, uh, the SPICE data. This is more on the, um, on the advanced side. I, this is also, there's also another introductory talk in this series sometime later. Um, I'm not sure when, but that there's another talk on this one. And this is the SAR data, uh, which is also not on the visible spectrum. This is in the IARS. I've told about it. Right, so these are all the data. And if you want to download OHRC data, which is the really high, re high resolution optical data that we have around the moon. And here is the browser. I would say this is more like a legacy browser. One, now, now that you have um, oof, last data, April 4th, they have released something a few days ago. OK, anyways. So that's how you see it. And um, this is more or less like a filter. Normally, what I do is I go to file name, because I already know which file I want to download. I'm going to explain you how. And you enter what file you want to download it. For example, that. You enter. Mm, let's say it's going to be fast. This is usually slow, or at least it was slow for me. Anyways, let me not take up time on that. <coughs> OK, let's see. Let it run. OK, so uh, another one is observation time. So if you know already uh, when, uh, when a particular file was taken, then you can also search based on that. This is the observation time. And in after, before, and so on and so forth. And there is also creation time, which is different. It is a TDI stage, which we don't want to. This is probably not what you are searching for. TDI stages is different. Linux for duration is also different. So probably the most useful one for you would be a file name and observation time. And this is the same for also um, TMC2. Go to terrain mapping camera. Um, if you don't know what a TMC is, um, Chandrayaan 2 has uh, different kinds of, uh, two different kinds of camera. One is a low resolution camera. Another one is a high resolution camera. A <coughs> high resolution camera is OHRC, which has a 25 centimeter resolution. Uh, the low resolution camera is the TMC2. This is the second variant. Chandrayaan 1 has TMC, the first one, and this is the, the second one. This has three cameras in, and, and what they do is they take uh, low resolution pictures. I th think it's about five meter resolution. Um, so what they, what they use these um, three cameras is, is to create or, or generate this uh, stereo pairs. There are three stereo pairs. What does that mean? Um, so let us let me quickly explain this so that you understand. So let's say this is Chandrayaan 2, and it's taking um, a picture of, uh, let's say, that, that part, right? And this is uh, what you call as a SWAT. So depending on the camera, depending on the sensor, the SWAT could be high, or, or, or the SWAT width could be high, or SWAT width could be low. So how does that mean, or how does is it make difference? So OHRC is a pretty high resolution camera, right? So it takes pretty detailed pictures of of the um, of whatever observation area, right? So in order to take high resolution, um, so what you have is on in the other direction you would have very it can only cover very small distance on the um, on the <coughs> on the ground on the moon, right? And this is called a SWAT. Uh, just a really simple explanation about it. And this is called a SWAT width. So if you have large SWAT width, then the resolution would be low. If you have very low SWAT width, the resolution would be high. So this is um, a little bit of difference that you would see everywhere. 
And what you see here is, uh, for example, the Nadir is a, is a direct uh, point right below the satellite. When you, when you take cameras, depending on where it is mounted on the satellite, um, the Nadir position and the point where the camera is looking at the moon would be different. So the point what I'm trying to tell you is um, uh, TMC2 has three cameras which looks the same part of the moon of the surface in three different directions, the same part. Uh, which is stored and which is um, mounted in, in different angles. So what you get at the end of the day is t the same observation area could be looked at different angles. So based on those pictures, let's say three pairs or two pairs and then three images, they can construct, um, they can derive an elevation data out of it. So how high is it? So uh, probably you, would have, uh, you are aware of the elevation data, right? The DTM or DEM. So this is more or less um, why TMC2 is useful for. <coughs> That's why it's called a terrain mapping camera. It can map the terrain. We will construct some kind of a, a crater in, in 3D map uh, soon. OK, so that, that's about it. So uh, same idea here. And uh, if you go to other downloads, also important, probably you've not, not many have would have seen it. I didn't either at the beginning. <coughs> If you go to TMC2 and OHRC, you can download a so-called user guide. This is most useful. So if you're starting new, and if you want to know what, how they are constructed, what is the file structure, please read the user guide. And this is obviously really helpful. And there's also shapefiles here. Uh, the shapefiles give you the, uh, in the, the footprint, footprint of the instrument or, or the observation area. I'm going to also show you what that means. So it, gonna, it will give you an idea about what part of the uh, moon uh, is, the, is the image from. Instead of, looking at the, instead of looking at the image itself, you can look at the shapes and then tell if it's covering your desired region of interest or not. So that's about uh, the shape file. These are the two main things if you want to explore, if you are starting out, these are the two main things that you want to look, probably take care about, user guide and the shape files. And, and that's pretty much it. This is what you need to, to, to start your um, exploration on, on ISROs, at least at the beginning. <coughs> All right, so that's part of the, um, of the, of, of the data dissemination portal. So how does, uh, how does ISRO archive the data or when it gets the data from different kinds of instruments? How does it store? Where does it store? And what kind of a structure it is, right? So you have the orbiter here um, and the orbiter records the data or observes the data and it, it's acquired by uh, our tracking center. And the data, and there are two kinds of data, let's say, uh, to explain it simply, one is the, the positional information about, uh, of the spacecraft itself and the image data. <coughs> so you get, at one part, you get where the spacecraft is, where the orbiter is, when taking the picture, and then you take you get the picture itself. So those two have to be combined and processed, and um, a unified structure data or unified archive needs to be generated based on it. Otherwise, it's difficult to know where the data is coming from. And <coughs> and this is where what you call as a PDS4, and this is the data archive format that ISRO uh, ships in. Uh, PDS is a planetary data system, version 4, uh, which is what ISRO is using at the moment. Um, but uh, NASA's data is also in PDS3 format. That's a different format I'm going to talk about in the, in the NASA's um, series or NASA's uh, talk. Okay, so that's the uh, general idea about it. There's a lot more information about it. You can uh, read my blog post or you can also read the um, read the user guide to know a little bit more about it. So that's uh, a data format, data, ar data archive format. So what kind of data products are there are available in, in ISROs? So there are raw data products and calibrated data products and derived data products. These are on, 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 on a, a very high level. Uh, what kind of data products are available? What kind of files are available? So if you see all the files, no, not here. Let's say, for example, if we go to TMC2. Okay, let it load. 
So there are different kinds of files that you can find in general. So in general, there are raw, raw files or raw data products, calibrated data products, and derived data products. So raw data products are the direct, direct information from the instruments. So there is no calibration, no corrections, uh, nothing. It's just a direct data from the, from the instruments. That's also available if you want to calibrate it yourself. Wouldn't really recommend it. There's also a calibrated data products, which are radiometrically um, corrected data. So normally what you see is that whenever you have a satellite or a sensor that's trying to take a picture or image of a, of a surface, depending on the sensitivity of the instrument, uh, depending on what kind of sensor it is, if it's hyperspectral sensor, if, it, if it's a visible spectrum, um, let's say if it's an instrument that's sensitive to visible spectrum, you have uh, different kinds of sensors and so on and so forth. So uh, those are uh, normal data. These are just raw pixel values that you get from raw data products, but those don't give much of information and, and they are uh, usually uh, called as uh, DN values, those are digital numbers, basically. What you get are just digital numbers directly from sensors, but those needs to be calibrated to whatever you're observing. So if it's, uh, if it's some kind of, a, let's say, crater or a surface and you're trying to look at the, um, the brightness or how bright it is, um, um, so you need to calibrate it. And there are different kinds of calibration, but normally calibration data or calibrated data products are radiometrically calibrated, which would mean that you convert the additional numbers from the sensors to radiance values or irradiance values. Um, there are different uh, difference between radiance and irradiance. Uh, we're not going to talk about it right now. But normally, uh, ISRO's um, uh, calibrated data products isn't really clear uh, what, what kind of uh, calibration it is. It's not really clear. Uh, but you get some kind of brightness values from it. Uh, we're gonna see. Look, we're gonna look into it. Um, yeah, that's that's a calibrated data product. The other one is the derived data products, which are the derived data from calibration calibrated data products, which has uh, which has ge geometric corrected. So uh, normally, when you take a picture of an image on of a picture of a surface on the moon, and you want to know where it is exactly. You want to know a lat long position of it, right? So these are the geometric corrections that you have to do. And um, there are in certain instruments, for example, in OHRC, uh, you don't have derived products. Uh, I'll explain later on. You have in TMC2, you have derived data products, which is the auto image and the, and the elevation data. Both are provided for you. So if you look into any of the um, images, for example, here you see OTH, which is the autographic image, DTM is the elevation data. So these are the two, two data that you would get. Uh, I'm gonna show you what, how it would look like. So these are the two derived products. So D would mean derived, right? With OHRC, it's different. So OHRC gives you only calibrated data products. It cannot give you derived data product. Right, so that's uh, um, an overview of the data products. Um, but if you, whenever you download it, it can be a little bit hard to, to understand. Uh, let's say if you go and, and download this, uh, it's really hard to understand um, uh, what it is. So for example, if I go to, let's say this is one of the product that I download. So you get three folders, browse, data, and miscellaneous. So if you don't know what it is, it's kind of hard to, uh, hard to understand what these are. So data is the, uh, let's say if you download a calibrated data product, uh, you would see uh, data, all your calibrated actual data is in data folder. Browse are the images. So these are calibrated browse image. For example, let's say these are the images in PNG format that you can directly open it in any browser, uh, no, in any image viewer. Let me, let's say, let me. There you go. For example, for example, that this is just an image viewer in Mac, and you can open it with any normal viewer. You don't need any kind of a um, really PDS4 viewer for that. You can directly open it if you want to share it. But this is the entire script. You can't really do much with it. Miscellaneous is also another important information that you probably wouldn't need it at the beginning. This contains uh, miscellaneous auxiliary information like. Where is the sun? Uh, what is the sun parameter? What, can, what is the liberation angle? Um, and where was the spacecraft when it took a picture? And so on and so forth. Attitude information and orbit information and so on and so forth. 
but you don't need it at the moment. You only need to consider on data or browse, if you will. Um, the entire user guide is here. I've already shown you where it is. Please download it. Uh, there's also in the derived data product, as I showed you before, um, there's also auto image, which is the um, geometry corrected um, data, which is auto rectified data. And there's also a DM file, which is elevation data. So <coughs> that's it. So one of the things that is uh, very confusing uh, for anyone who's starting off uh, really, really new is, is the structure, right? So what does this mean? What does this weird TMC2, ND, N, this, D, DTM, what does this mean? What does D32 mean? And this is, can be a little bit hard to understand what you're looking at. And this is, was, uh, it's not really clear. So this is what I've, I've prepared in, the, in here. So the first one that you see, this is a common naming structure that ISRO follows in any of the data that they share, be it OHRC, be it DFSR, be it whatever instrument in Chandran 2. And this is the format that they use. Uh, after CH2, there is an instrument. What kind of instrument it is? So for example, let me zoom in. So if it's uh, TMC, then it's TMC. If it's OHRC, then it's OHR. And IRS is another instrument. So this is one of the things that they, what they should that they show. And the other one is the MTC. M is different. M is for, um, normally, this is for the mission phase name. Probably you don't need to care about this one. But the one that is uh, interesting for you to know is, is, is RCD. And this is the one that I've, uh, that I've talked about. Uh, R is a raw data product, calibrated data product, and derived data product. Calibrated data product is available for OHRC. And with TMC2, you download only the derived data, which is the elevation data and uh, the auto-rectified data. So that's what you have to download. So you need to look into D here. <coughs> and another one is the if you download any of the um, raw data product, uh, let's say, or calibrated even, you would see uh, an FAN here, for example. <coughs> so for example, if you see here NDN, right? Oh, NDN. And this is what you would see. TMC, TMC is a TMC file, a TMC instrument, and NDN is, um, wait a second. Let me show you another one, if it allows me to. Mm. Portal is too slow. OK, anyways. So N is the is an other camera, and A is the aft camera, and F is the four camera. So there are three cameras, as I told you, for TMZ. So you probably would see FAN in the naming structure. So if it's derived data product, then you would it's always Nadir, so which is, which is the derived data product. Don't worry about if it's Nadir or not. But if you're looking at calibrated data product or raw data product, then you would see one of those FAN. So these are the three cameras. And another one is the, is the date where the image was taken. And P. Um, that's P. So in P, you would probably see what is the other one? Ah, OK. If it's data or browse or, or, or grid data product, this is probably what you would see when you download the data product. Um, let me, ah, there we go. <coughs> there. Okay, the other one is the um, the other one is also with image. If it's a browse image or if it's DTM or auto image, so this is the most important part. Um, the other ones are not that um, uh, interesting. The other one is the STN. If you see D thirty eight, sorry. The oh, weather isn't cooperating with me. D32 is, uh, is a different um, station where the data was acquired. D32 is Bangalore, D18, GDS, and CNB.
sorry any questions so far no questions okay good so oh yeah that's QGIS and that's what you're gonna do so PDS4 viewer in um, is pretty let's say in Mac it's, it's very uncomfortable to work with and it's also slow pretty slow so QGIS is the only free tool let's say in free and open source tool that is very very useful for us um, don't use PDS4 viewer and don't you don't need to convert it into TIFF files. So QGIS is pretty powerful and it can work with uh, any kind of um, any kind of data. I, I will show you now how to use it. Any more questions? I mean, you can feel feel free to talk if if that's possible. Okay, good. So let's take a look at um, um, some of the way that you can, some of the alternative ways to explore. Um, there is something called as um, <coughs> Quick Map. I've shared the link. Uh, please go through it. So Quick Map is one of the uh, most famously used by scientists, researchers, and hobbyists, and everyone uh, from from NASA and in cooperation with ASU. It's prepared by some other company. So this is the de default or, or the de facto let's say explorer that you could use to to observe any part of the of moon there it's pretty powerful you, uh, so you can see different kinds of projections here spherographic north and, and and lunar and so on and so forth and this is what i also use um, pretty pretty heavily and all this data is coming from lro uh, which is also um, a nasa um, orbiter so all this data is coming from there and the, the way to use it is uh, you can just it's pretty simple you can directly for example um, let's say let's look at your point so there it is it is the google maps of moon pretty much that's how um, easy i can exp explain so every time you know uh, the way you browse google maps you can browse the same thing and in quick maps but this is much much more powerful so you can also download the um, NASA's data directly from here, and then you can also use different kinds of, uh, let's say, how would I say, terrain slope. There are also different kinds of layers and overlays that you can do, and then make uh, and then do your own research here. You, you, it's pretty powerful. Uh, we will explain it later on in the NASA's um, talk. But that's um, <coughs> that's Quick Map. Uh, Quick Map is uh, NASA's way. Uh, NASA's moon google map in a way in a nutshell that i have that i can explain so one of the things that's um, that's interesting for for us to to look at is the um, well, let's say how would i how would i sh um anyways okay i'll explore that later so this is one way to explore um, moon example like that and uh, ISRO has recently started uh, or created another uh, let's say a quick map alternative let's say our own version of a uh, quick map where you can download look into the data what kind of data that ISRO has collected so far until now and everything and this is the CH2 browse and this is the Chandrayaan data explorer and visualization. This is, the, like, let's say, the, the next version of, of uh, a more easier, supposed to be the most easier version to explore the data. For example, let's say uh, I told you a while ago on how to download it, right? So let me pull it here. So normally you observe the time, the file name, but how would you get the file? How would you know which file to download? It kind of, it's a little bit hard. <coughs> So uh, normally what you do is um, you go to corrected coordinates and then give your, uh, let's say, uh, the box coordinates. This is very, very unfriendly uh, search engine uh, filter. And it's also, it's also a little bit also buggy. Um, that's uh, a different topic. But this, is the o this was the only way to, to download it, to download the data from ISRO, which was very, very difficult. Uh, QuickMap 
is, dif is different. You can uh, enter your coordinates, and then uh, let's say, let's say, if I if you let's say whatever, let's do it. Click on any point, and you go to inspect and search for products, and then you can download is um, NASA's data or LRO's data directly here, and this is how simple it is. But ISROS was very, very difficult to download. It was also difficult for me to download, so that's why they have started called they started a new um, let's say data explorer called visualization um, um, Chandrayaan data explorer and visualization, which is the CH2 browse, and you can go get this also from here, home and CH2 browse. Go to map browse, click on CH2 data map, and that's it. CHMAP, browse ISSTC. You need the same credentials, so don't no need to download the new credentials. No need to use a different credentials. So that's how you download. <coughs> and initially, you get this kind of uh, view, this kind of projection. Let's say, uh, let's say a flat. You would have seen a projection, right? A Mercator projection. That let's say you can assume this is that. And also, zoom in, and this is uh, based on tile, so it, uh, the data is downloaded um, as soon as you browse in. Also, like Google Maps, and the way you download your data is you go on layers. For example, you can look into different kinds of footprints of instruments, so if you want to know what kind of data um, CH2 has mapped so far, for example, no, let's say auto. So, So almost everything, but we have not mapped everything. And that's the entire footprint of uh, TMC2, right? Uh, let's say in comparison, let's, do, let's take a look at OHRC. Let's say calibrated data product. And now you see the difference. Can you see it? Do you see it? If you zoom in the yellow one here, that's OHRC and you zoom out, you can barely see it. So that's the difference. So earlier I told you about the SWAT width, right? So if you look into it, the SWAT width of OHRC is very, very low, but very, very high, but very, very low. So, and we have not mapped the entire uh, moon with OHRC, and this is a lot more targeted. So whenever we have need, um, I don't know who makes a decision on, on which part of the moon that has to be uh, mapped, but the data that has been released to public is, is very, very low, and I, I don't know why, uh, because uh, there's a lot more data that you can do, and we don't have um, nearly enough data, and so we have to rely on LRO to LRO NAC uh, images to, to download the data. So, but anyways. So if you want to do, if you want to look into Vikram, for example, this is how you can also do it. L but for example, let me go to the South Polar map. And let's say crater, let me switch on crater, let's switch on the latitude. So it is minus 69 or 69 south and 32 east. somewhere around here. So it's somewhere around here, but let me switch on the OHRC. There you go. Okay. All right. So you would probably see it somewhere here. I have no clue. So that's the, the thing with uh, the CH2 map browse. The primary issue with CH2 MapBros is we don't know where to look. So the only way to um, to search for your uh, data products from CH2 MapBros is either you select, let's say, OHRC like that, and then if you know, let's say, you have calibrated data products for OHRC, and the only way to select is that one. <coughs> so here. 
and you don't know these kind of data, then you have to calculate it yourself. So it is really hard. But for the convenience sake, I already have um, the file which contains the data. I'm going to show you later how to get that. But I already have that. And that is okay. Does it show it? Interesting. I don't know where it is. Okay. So this is the problem with the uh, CH2 browser. This is uh, very hard to find the uh, find these kind of things with CH2 map browse. Um, with LRO, you don't have such kind of issues. So this is why um, I've, I've created um, a, a different kind of portal. So this would be a little bit of complementary portal. And this is the SOMA portal that I've developed uh, during the time that I was working with it. <coughs> so this pretty much works similarly. This is the this is Moon. This is based on cesium. This is Moon. And uh, what you do is you have different projections. This is not exactly a projection, but different parts of the Moon. So you have full view, South Pole, North Pole. And let's say we look at the South Pole. Go zoom in a little bit. And in the shape catalog, you can select, let's say, OHRC South Pole. So you see, there, and there would be let's spread around here and here. But let me look into the grid. Somewhere around here, but let's do a little bit more. So hmm. around three, there you go. It's still a little bit buggy, but anyways. Anyways, so this is how I usually use. So you can also type in the, the shape catalog, and then you can select any one of that. So normally, this is how I use. I enter the coordinates that I can use, and then I look into the ship catalog, and then I select one of the file names, and I download it directly. So that's usually I use, but uh, Sage to Browse is also one way, other way to download it. But this is a little bit difficult to find your own uh, region of interest. So <coughs> anyways, this is a little bit about the Moon Explorer and about the Soma Explorer. Right. A while ago, I told you about the structure. So let me show you the structure of OHRC. And this are one of the files. So you see CH2, OHR, which is the OHRC file, NCP, Nader, calibrated. Um, P, I don't have to find out what P is. But that's, you need to usually observe only on NC. N is another, and C is a calibrated. And this is the time when it was uh, taken. D is the derived data product, which is the, OHR, which is the only of. OHRC, and you go to TMC2. TMC2 also has the same structure, which is TMC and the N. These are calibrated because these are derived, so you have D. DTM is the elevation data. OHR is the, oh, sorry, OTH is the orthographic data. So that's uh, about the data. OK, so let's actually use QGIS. I think we are almost getting to the end of the session. Let's open QGIS, and then I will try to explore Vikram lander TMC2, look into the crater. Probably we create a 3D model of it. So um, does everyone download it, or do you want to download it now? Who has QGIS installed?
Anyone? I can't see you actually. Okay, so go to the URL that I've shared you, download QGIS and install it. And once you've installed it, you have this kind of, um, this is the layout that you would see. And the easy way to download it and open it is you just go to new, let's say new. Once you download it, let's say an OHRC file. Let me to OHRC and 2023, that's the one, no, that's auto. Go to the data, which is the calibrated one I told you. Take the XML file, dump. There it is. That's it. That's the script which contains Vikram. Now, I've already prepared where Vikram is. Uh, you already know the coordinates of Vikram, but this is a South Pole image, which is in the South Polar, uh, let's say, it's in the projected format. So you probably cannot find the data like that. So I. I have already prepared something. Let me quickly change the... Oh, not this. That. There you go. <coughs> so. Let's zoom in. Do you see something here? There you go. There you go. That's our Vikram, and that's the shadow that it casted. And this is the post landing image, actually. There's also pre landing image that I've already downloaded, which is on, which has been taken on 2021. Uh, let me grab the XML, dump it here. So, I also have the coordinates of it. Whoopsie. Interesting. This is probably a different one, but okay, never mind. Oh, okay. There you go. This is the same. Doesn't look the same actually. Okay, anyways. But let me let you let me show you Vikram again. <coughs> so normally whenever you open QGIS, uh, again just to show you around, just click on new, open brand new QGIS, we don't need to do anything, this is PDS4 data, download it, drag it, unzip it, obviously, and for example, let me go to TMC2, this is uh, another thing that I've downloaded before, so let me open up the OHRC, this is the derived data product as I told you before, TIFF file, dump it, and zoom to layer, and there it is. Of course, this is in a different projected system. So don't worry about the projection system right now. So that's it. And the one that you see on the, um, let's say here, these are the coordinates in degrees, right? So for example, that one here, it's another crater, another crater, and this is the autographic image. And let me explain you the 
elevation data. There you go. This is the elevation data. There you go. For example, if you look at this crater here, there you go. See? There you go. So the elevation data gives you how the, the elevation of the particular environment, the, the particular scene, uh, to be clear. I'm going to show you uh, in shortly how to create a 3D model out of it. But that's how it is. It's pretty easy. Uh, you, you don't need any skills to, to learn. It's very simple. Download it, click on new, take the data product or any of the file, if it's a TIFF file or if it's like XML file, if it's OHRC. Because again, OHRC is just calibrated. Uh, it's not derived. So you take it here, go to data folder, take the XML file, not the IMG file, take the XML file, drag it, and drop it. And that's it. That's how simple it is. The rest you don't need to bother, uh, at least for now. So that's how you download it. Uh, you use the QGIS at the very, very simple. So I've already prepared uh, something. Save. I've already prepared few things so that we could. So this is exactly the same thing that I told, showed you before. Um, that's the um, image that I've that I've showed you before, and uh, the reason why I sh why I chose this is because I wanted to show you Sarab High Crater. Uh, the crater that you see here is Sarab High Crater. Right? Let's uh, look into Isro. Oh no, no, Isro is a little bit difficult. Okay, let me show you my some more portal. No. Sarab High Crater. That's how it is. It's in the top equatorial region. And so there, I think I can just, I don't need it. I know already where it is. Okay. There you go. That's Sarabai Crater. And what do I do? Let's go to TMC2. So this is usually how I download uh, the soft. I just search for my desired area. I, for example, I want to download um, the 3D, I want to construct the 3D map of the crater. I look into the TMC2 and I select that one and then I know which one, which files to download. So here is the, old, or the autographic image. Most of the time you have autographic and elevation data as a, as a pair, so you can download it. You copy it, I go to the, um, the, the Pradhan website and then I go to the classic way of downloading it. I hope I can see it here. I go to the file name and I enter the file name there and then that's it. That's how I download it. So that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to construct um, the, the crater here. So before we construct, I, I did a few things before. I already extracted the crater itself. So um, how I did, I, I created um, a, a map so as to speak of, let's say, let me put it that way here. Uh, no. Hang on a second. Let me put this up. There you go. And so what I did is I just selected a region around the crater. So let me show you. That's the crater, and I selected uh, a region around the crater. It's easy to construct it. That's uh, beyond the scope of this lecture. I constructed it, and then I extracted the um, the OTH and the 
I, can, I extracted the image data and the elevation data out of it, and then I, I got this um, got this data. And what I did in addition to it is I did a little bit of processing. This is also a little bit Im interesting for anyone who's processing the data. You go to, you click on any of the, the image data, you go to symbology, and you can adjust the, the layer rendering. So normally you can address, you can adjust the stretch parameters like minimum and maximum parameters. That's probably beyond the scope of, of this tutorial. So normally you can address the, the brightness area if it's too bright or, or too, too low. For example, and you can mess around this parameter to, to see what is visible, how much contrast you need, how much brightness you, re you need. This is something I would really recommend you to do it. And then, how do you construct it? I think I've already shared the QGIS plugin, and that's called as Q3GS. You click on Q3GS by selecting these two, and look what happens. And bam, there you go. Of course, you have these kind of uh, clip regions. Uh, there's an easy way to do it. What you do is you go a little bit to the near to the crater and go back, and there you go. And that's it. That's how simple it is to create. I mean, of course, there's also advanced way to do it. But in a way, if you want to explore and you want to know how big it is and how easy to it, it is to construct it, that's how you construct it. This is the Sarabai crater. Uh, this is the exact same crater that Israel has shared when they imaged it, but you can do it yourself now, and that's how easy it is. Just download that exact data and, and go to QGIS, dump this to, download the plugin QGIS 23JS. I've shared you the link, download it, and click on it, and there you go. You don't need to mess up any parameters. However, I would like to point out there are two parameters that I've adjusted here. In the scene settings, you go to Z exagger exaggeration. And this parameter is uh, normally set to 1. right? And if it's 1, by default, it will be like that. So don't be alarmed. <coughs> go to scene, just, and you just need to mess around this parameter, uh, the Z exaggeration parameter. That's uh, beyond the scope on it to explain how, how those things work right now. And that's it. And there's also uh, a little bit more you can do, which is selecting the camera position. I've already done some. So. And if you do loop, <coughs> and that's it. So you can go one step forward. You can export the scene to a web like that. And then you can extract an HTML file, share it in GitHub to your friends, or I don't know, show off to whoever you want. Put it on X, put it on your blog, do however you want. And you can export the scene into a picture as well. So I have already exported the scene, uh, just so that you know, and we are almost finished. So where is this? Uh, TMT2. There you go. And in that group. There you go. This is how it's going to be when you export to web. You have HTML, you have JSS, CSS, and JS, everything included, bundled. You don't need to do anything. And that's it. And that's about it. Actually, we are one hour, 10 minutes. Um, any more questions? Uh, however, I, before we take up questions, I have one question that was uh, given by Amol. I don't know if you just joined in. He asked about how we plot the ground um, coverage trace of a satellite. So if you're watching online or on, on X or on YouTube, um, there is something called the TLEs that you could download for any satellite that's, uh, if it's uh, more than 20 centimeters or 30 centimeters, I'm not sure. Uh, this has been, uh, this is tracked by NORAD, and you can go to any of these websites and, uh, for example, go to, let's say, Sales Track, for example. Um, 
every satellite or every object, to be clear, uh, which is launched to space, and it will be tracked by NORAD, and it will be catalogued. So there is already a catalog um, number assigned to any satellite that has been launched. For example, ExpoSat. For example, that's the only thing that I can think. So this is the ExpoSat, and this is the NORAD catalog number. So this is the most important number that you need, and this is also international designator. So both of them are assigned. So for PSLV, uh, this also assigned when a PSLV was launched with Poem. Um, when when the object split for example, uh, because there are, it, there are different stages. Every stage ha gets their own designator. So this is 001A, and there would be also 001B. So that's something that you have to notice. So anyways, whenever you search something, you go to the latest data, click on that, and this is the TLE. Uh, again, this is beyond the scope to explain TLE. This is called a two-line uh, element. Uh, search outside, and then you know how it is how what those um, mean so essentially tles give you a model of the um, of the orbit of the object around earth right and that's what you get you get a tle and normally you could use um, uh, n2yo to track those things get the your catalog numbers from one of these websites go to n2y n2yo.com this is a pretty famous take the catalog number for example or normally into IO also has a way to download it or search based on name. Search based on the, the number, there you go, expose that, and let's say track now, and you will get some kind of uh, information. There you go. You can do so draw footprint, and then this is the ground track information. That's how you normally do without doing any kind of coding. But if you want to do coding, then you can also use different kinds of libraries from Python, Skyfield, Matplot, Lib, and Car2Py. Uh, these are the two uh, easy or most straightforward um, frameworks that you can use. So libraries you can use on Python to track a satellite, for example, that. That's the ground track that I've designed just for example. But anyways, any more questions? Um, that concludes the session. <coughs> Excuse me. Questions? Uh, if there are no questions, then I think we can con conclude the session. But Sorry, was there a, was that a question? Path? Oh, okay. What, what was? Lunar geological studies in any three modeling software. Um, what do you mean? Uh, do you want to use a 3D modeling software to study the topography, you mean? Shashi, you can speak. It's easier to, to talk. I encourage to talk instead of the chat. Ah, okay. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by lunar geological studies. Um, 
uh, for example, I used uh, the QG, the the 3JS plugin for QGIS uh, that that you have seen. Uh, normally, you could also use Blender. Uh, I also use Blender a lot um, to to exactly do the same thing, but in a much more controlled um, in a much more controlled environment where you could tune in a lot more parameters there. If that's what you mean, that's also something that I use to study the topography, and QGIS also is pretty powerful to do a lot more analysis. Ah, okay. For mineralogy, um, like olivine, pyroxene, and other mineralogy studies, you don't need. I mean, the the visible, uh, let's say, the images are not sufficient. Uh, you probably would need the M3. Um, um, the moon mineralogy mapper that's on Chandra and one um, to do a little bit more detailed analysis on it. So that's probably what you would mean. Is that what you mean? You need to download the M3 data, as I told you uh, a while ago, with the um, uh, with the long term storage. That's M3 data there. You can download it for your own scene. Also, you could also use uh, ESA or NASA's website to download M3 data, and then uh, do further studies. Because these things are not really, you can't really do any kind of analysis or detect these kind of minerals just based on the image. Good. Um, any more questions from anywhere? OK, good. Sure. I'm, I'm going to, again, we'll do the same kind of a uh, process to create new session. Okay. Uh, Sasi, we'll, um, we'll catch up offline. I think it's already like uh, an hour and a half past. Great. Thank you. All right, then. Have a, thank you, have a good day.